One way that we could estimate the percentage by volume of oxygen in the air experimentally is to react that oxygen with some iron wool like this. Now we've met this reaction previously. I'd like you to suggest which three reactants, so one of those is the iron wool, which other two reactants would react together and what would be the common name for the compound formed. Suggest that now. So the three things that react together would be the iron wool, and the oxygen, which is the whole point of moving the oxygen from the air, in the presence of water. So the common name for the reactant that we are dealing with here is, of course, rust. So I'm going to take some iron wool, and I've just put some water into this test tube, and I'm just going to carefully, using this glass stirring rod, push that iron wool into that water there. So we've got iron wool, iron, and water, and oxygen from the air, so this stuff is going to go rusty, the iron wool is going to go rusty. Now of course the rust is a solid, the iron was a solid anyway, but the oxygen is a gas, so removing that oxygen from the gas mixture means that the volume of gas left in that mixture is lower than it was previously. Um, and if this takes the oxygen from the air above it, out, uh, then we can use that as a measure of the volume of oxygen um, that was in the air column to start with. So in order to do that, take a beaker and pop some water in the bottom of the beaker, not too much, but pop a bit of water in the bottom of that beaker. And then upturn this test tube like so. And what should happen over time is this tiny little column of air should move up this test tube in order to replace the volume of the oxygen, which is reacted away and has kind of got caught up, up here. So it's produced a solid compound, which is up at this end of the tube. So the volume of air left in the tube decreases over time. So by measuring that distance just now, and then leaving this for a period of time, because rusting's pretty slow, so it's probably about a week or so, and measure the distance and the volume therefore at the end, we've got a bit of a measure experimentally as to uh, what percentage of this was oxygen in the first place. Notice that I've, I've tipped the tube to the side like so, because if it sits just flat like so, it can kind of form a bit of a seal on the bottom and stops the water from, from moving up. So putting it on the side allows it to take that water in over time. So I'll have to leave that now uh, for a week, probably, and remeasure it. We could then leave it another week, measure it again, just to check that it's not changing. Um, and that should hopefully allow us one experimental way of calculating the volume. If you look in your lab book, there's some example uh, method steps and some questions to go with that that you can now have a go at. A second method we could use though to perhaps improve on this one, but using exactly the same reaction is this kit here. So inside this flask, I've got some iron again, but this time I've decided to use iron filings. So that's iron that's just finely divided into, into small pieces. Again, at the minute, it's, it's dry. And again, I'd like to use this rusting reaction as a way of removing the oxygen from the volume. So what I'm going to do is just take some water and just make those iron filings wet, like so, and just pour off any extra water from that so that they're just damp iron filings and, and, um, and not too much water in there. So I've set this um, gas syringe. Let's, let's just choose a starting volume of, say, I don't know, 50 centimetres cubed, maybe a bit higher than that actually, just in case. Let's go with 90, 90 centimetres cubed inside here. So the volume inside the gas syringe is 90 centimetres cubed, but of course there's a bit of volume inside here and inside the flask to think about as well. So to actually calculate these results, the, the starting volume of the air, if you like, would be the total volume of the flask and the tubing and this bit here and the now 90, that's just popped out a bit as I've put that bung down, so that's now 94 centimetres, no, 92 centimetres cubed, sorry, I can't really scale. 92 centimetres cubed of, of air inside here. So again, just like this one, we've got a starting volume here and a starting volume, which is all of this stuff. We now need to leave that to rust for a week, at least, I would think. Um, and in this case, the water level rises up, so we would measure that difference. In this case, we can measure how much the volume of that whole apparatus has decreased as the oxygen is removed from the air. Again, you've got this example in your lab book.
please now have a look at the questions um, and work those up with, with this idea in mind.